Hello and welcome back. In this section, we are going to talk about types of NFC communication and what are three different ways through which NFC devices communicate with each other. So let us look at what are those three methods of communication in NFC. Number one is called the reader. So reader NFC is a passive communication which we have discussed in the last video. I'm sure that you remember what is an active and passive communication. So a reader NFC is a passive communication in which information can be transmitted without the use of a power source only reader uses the power that just responds which means only the device or the card or the machine or the merchant or the person uh, device is active or is using uh, internet or using a power source the card or the nfc tag or the debit card or credit card any tool which does not have its own power is just responding to the electricity which the reader is generating using the inductive coupling and using the uh, NFC mechanism. And then second one is called peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer means that both of the devices are active. So again, for example, two NFC enabled smartphones are called peer-to-peer -peer transfer. We have seen that into the last section as well. And then there's something called card emulation. So while reader NFC or peer-to-peer -peer methods uh, of communication can be used in various industry, Card emulation is being used into the loyalty part or primarily to digital payments or contactless payments. So let us look at what does card emulation means. NFC payment works in digital wallets. So when I say digital wallets like Apple Pay, Android Pay, Samsung Pay and all other different kind of uh, wallet based payments. So it works on the NFC enabled smartphones which incorporates credit and debit card, loyalty card or any other financial detail into the information which is transmitted by the phone's NFC tag which means for example, let's say uh, I'm using Apple Pay or I'm using a Google Pay or an Android Pay. What I can do is that I can I can enter my card details, which means debit or credit card details or a prepaid card details or a loyalty card details into my wallet. How can I do that? There are two ways. Either I type all the details manually or with technology, what I can do is just take a picture of that card and it automatically captures everything using OCR, which is called optical character recognition or any other technology it captures all the information to device the device then uses tokenization and encryption to create a token into the system which means the device for example apple pay does not store your credit card or debit card details it stores all the information into its secured element and then it only uses the token so again we have a detailed course on tokenization and encryption where we have talked about how android and apple pay works using tokenization. So again, tokenization encryption is a, a separate study because it is a too long, so we are not talking in detail about it. But I can give you an overview of how token works. So for example, let's say if you have a 16 digit credit card number in tokenization, what will happen? There could be two type of token. Either you will get a random generated 16 digit number, which will be kind of, which will look like a credit card number, but actually that is not a credit card number. That is just a random number to process a transaction. So again, so against that 16 digit random token, there will be a actual credit card number stored in, in cloud into the network provider or to your issuer bank or to some other provider. And whenever you want to make a payment, that token will be sent to the merchant. Merchant will then send that token to the token service provider, which will tell them that, okay, against this token, this is a credit card number. And then again, the digital payment processing happens, goes to the acquirer bank, then to the card network, then to the issuer bank, and then everything happens. That is again a different field of digital payments. So again, we have talked about in card and POS that how does a digital payment work at the back end. So in emulation, what happens is that you do not actually, you just kind of copy the entire information of the card into your own device and your device like your mobile phone, your smartwatch or your tablet or your PC or any other device which is capable of NFC payment become a card itself. You can just tap that mobile device into some acceptance uh, mobile POS or to say a POS machine of a merchant and the payment can be done. So again, sensitive information uh, can be uh, secured in digital wallets in two ways. So in card emulation, now the sensitive information is called your PAN information into your card is your PAN or your credit card or debit card number, expiry of your card, CVV and the who is your issuer bank, which is the card network and all those information gets stored. And how does it get stored? It's stored gets stored in two ways. One is a host card emulation. So we'll talk about in detail about host card emulation which is cloud-based, which means all the information which of your credit and debit card is not getting stored into the device. It is getting stored into some cloud-based system. So Android and Google Pay relies on host card emulation 
to use NFC based payments. However, there is another way which is called secure element. So secure element is a hardware chip which is inside your phone, which means that this is a device based uh, uh, chip and it is inside the device and it captures all the information. So that device is very much secured, which means that unless an application has a tie up with something called trusted service manager company, without trusted service manager root, any application cannot access that hardware. It is a secured chip and it is away from the operating system of the mobile phone, which means that if you have a secure element, again, so whenever you read about secure element, just consider that secure element as a small chip, which could be like a micro SD card could be on the same. So we'll talk about that in the later part. But then just consider that host card emulation is something which happens on a, in, in a internet based module where it goes to a cloud and gets stored there. And a secured element is a hardware inside the device, which means that which means a secure element captures all the information and stores it uh, securely into the device itself the information does not go out of your device everything just stored there but it is very secured and it is manufactured by the mobile phones for example apple pay in some of their in some of the higher end of the apple they use this secure element and in apple pay you will find that they use this secure element all the information of your debit credit card details a token gets uh, stored into the secure element so uh, and secure element cannot be um, deciphered unless you have a trusted service manager root or you have very high encryption or high decryption or high technology. It is almost impossible to break that secure element and get that information. So hence Apple Pay uses that and then uh, now we will talk about what is host card emulation and what is trusted service manager and what is secure element in the next section. So these are primarily three types. So these are three types of communication through which uh, different NFC devices talk to each other. Uh, one is a reader NFC, a second one is a peer-to-peer -peer, and then there's a card emulation. So we'll talk about these things into the later part of this course. So in the next section, let us touch briefly on what is secured element and what is trusted service manager. So we'll just again touch briefly on the technology aspect of it, but then we'll focus mostly on the business or impact of that technology onto the entire model. So see you in the next section. Till the time, take care and see you there. Thank you.